friends this is rahul magan here as a chief executive officer of treasury consulting pt limited which is a singaporean multinational group and today we would be covering a dedicate topic which is on metal derivatives traded app traded average price options shortly known as tapo as you very well understand that treasury consulting llp is now a player in energy and we are setting up an energy desk whereby we would be helping all the low cost airlines truck companies shipping companies and all the oil traders and all those people those who are not in a situation to establish their own desk you know basically because treasury is always a costly item not all the companies of the globe are able to have a treasury function so our energy desk in sync with our cfo desk would be able to help all the low cost shipping companies you know i would say the low cost airlines or the budgeted airlines the truck companies the refiners to hedge their metal derivatives and also energy derivatives at an optimum price with a good guidance in that regards we are today launching up a video which is tapo traded average price option unfortunately if you open the internet and if you type tapo it's very confusing you know, although it's pretty simple it's very confusing in the sense like you will get to know that boss this is something which is a very high tech have a very very high tech item of course it is but actually this is a concept which has been taken from foreign exchange in foreign exchange we have predominantly two kind of options one is deliverable and non deliverable and the categorization is pretty long at some part of this taxonomy taxonomy stands for categorization at some part of a taxonomy we have one type of uh, one type of categorization which is path dependency and non path dependency the so called call and put are non path dependency example today i am taking an option and suppose this option forget for a minute it's an american option or it's a european option in either ways this option is going to be uh, maturing after one month two month whatever period you will take now what is the situation before me that the price at which is it when it is going to come i will see boss whether this price is conducive i will exercise if it is not conducive i will not exercise this is not a path dependent because i don't know what would happen at that point of time maybe at that point of time i would have a war between two countries maybe at the, that point of time i would have don i would have donald trump and kim summit maybe at that point of time i would have a situation whereby one bank has already defaulted and, and another bank on the verge of default maybe at that point of time i would have i would have a situation whereby say i am dealing in a technological options i am i am i have a situation whereby the largest technological companies in the globe are facing a downturn or maybe they are facing an upturn nobody knows so the path dependency is not there because of which an investor is always subject to the expiration price at which he he or she would be getting of course i have i do not want to say that options are not better than forward they are better than forward now we have one kind of option which is a path dependent option now what is a path dependent option your settlement it is not a subject of expiration price so anything would happen the kim trump summit happen or not irrespective any oil issue happen or not irrespective anything happen or not irrespective fed would hike the rate or not irrespective the price of the settlement would be the average of that period now of course there are multiple methodologies which we have how do we compute the average is not as simple but this is all about path dependency when we come to metals and especially this video for which we are shooting which is london metal exchange when we comes to metal this path dependency feature has to be there because predominantly speaking there are three kind of derivative contracts which uh, of course the first is not derivative but just i'm using a little reference uh, there are three kind of derivative contracts which people have uh, which lme is offering number one is the futures number two is the future options number two third is the tapos which is traded average price option third is known as asian options in our foreign exchange language and sometimes also known as path dependent options and sometimes also known as averages so up to you how you are taking it the concept which i am telling you is that concept could easily be used and of course today which is uh, 9th of june right there are so many people across the globe who must be using that concept so i might not be surprised with that also in this you need to remember three things very carefully thing number 1 you are not dealing with one price at expiration you are dealing with the average at expiration 
and thing number two which is very important you might you might forget the thing number one but you should not forget the thing number two which is that the average of your option basically the average which you will compute is dependent upon you and the premium which you're going to be paying is not only the product of the volatility sorry implied volatility at that point of time the geographical and the market situation the fundamental uh, outlook of that metal but also dependent upon the kind of averages you will choose so if today somebody will come to me and say that boss i wanted to take two option i'll answer him okay boss you tell me what kind of option you want to take he will say i wanted to take one foreign exchange options in call okay and i want to take one foreign exchange tapo oh uh, sorry i wanted to take one one say uh, aluminium aluminium tapo at lme I would be saying the way you will compute the premium or for foreign exchange would completely be different than the way you compute the premium at TAPO because there are a lot of factors which this black skulls foreign exchange will not include on the other hand TAPO black skull will surely be included. Now if you look at this chart which I have made TAPO traded average option is also known as Asian option and sometimes known as path dependent options and sometimes known as averages. The averages are basically of three types. Number one, it is a geometric average. This I will discuss later. Number two, it's a arithmetic average. Sorry, I wrongly wrote, wrote this as an option. This is arithmetic average. Now, I hope when it comes to geometric average, and if you are a regular uh, reviewer of a regular uh, subscriber of our videos, you would you would have one thing that that would have uh, hit your mind uh, that from where this geometric word would have came. This geometric word would have came from already existing, uh, you know, uh, basically this is an existing standard, which is OIS, Overnight Index Swaps. If you would have watched our videos, which is Overnight Index Swap, you would be knowing that the methodology to compute average is using geometric. But in OIS, there is no option which you have, like you can go with the arithmetic also, or you can go with the geometric, no. Here things are pretty clear. You boss, you have to go with geometric. But here things are not clear. So it's not black and white. Because it's an OTC contract. It's not a futures contract. And OTC stands for over the counter. So it's between two parties. Of course, that would be settled, would be, uh, settled using CME clear. Sorry, LME clear, which is a clearing exchange, clearing platform of London Metal Exchange. But it has to be, the, 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 the terms and condition has to be over the counter. So an investor, let's take an option. You have a company whose name is Excel Mobil. I don't think there is any introduction uh, which is required to explain this company because it is the largest petrochemical company of this globe. And you have one, uh, say you have a trader here who is sitting in New York and you know, and you have CME here, sorry, my mistake, LME here. It's very confusing, you know, once you talk about metal, you have to talk about LME. Once you talk about oil, you have to talk about CME and IC. So a lot of things you have to remember actually. So which is LME. Now ExxonMobil wanted to trade. I'm taking a hypothetical example that this, this trader is a pretty rich man or big man. They wanted to have a $2 billion of trade. Now ExxonMobil is actually a producer. Remember, not a refiner. It's a producer, not a refiner. Now what they are, they would be doing, now let's take one third party, which is, uh, say, refiner. Any refiner you trade. So this refiner also wanted to trade, uh, to have this trade, assuming this is again 2 billion. And this is LME, London Metal Exchange, LME clear. Now this trader has to report two trades to LME. Trade number one, Exxon to trader. Trade number two, the refiner to trader. This is the first thing. Since Exxon is a producer and Exxon wanted to sell because Exxon is a producer of oil, uh, Exxon is the largest producer of the petrochemical oil. Exxon wanted to sell screwed. So Exxon would be taking a put call. Sorry, put option. On the contrary, refiner wants screwed. He wanted to buy crude. So he would be taking a call option. I repeat. Exxon is the largest producer of the crude in this globe. So they wanted to buy, they wanted to sell the crude because whatever they are producing, I wanted to sell it, right? So they will go for put option. On the contrary, the refiner 
he needs crude so that he can create refined and he can earn the crack. I, I don't think you will forget it, but uh, I hope you remember that crack is nothing but crude minus refined. So he needs to buy it. He needs to buy it, right? Uh, he needs to buy it. Now, how it happens? Now, how it happens? Uh, now, you know, uh, uh, how it happens? Uh, how it happens? Exxon will go for put. I'm not talking Bermudan right now. Assuming both have different way of looking at it. Exxon think that price would rise little bit and then would fall. So it is better for me, uh, price would uh, rise little bit then would fall. It is better for me to lock right now so that I'm able to sell at a higher price. Refiner is having a different view. He thinks that price would go go uh, slow and it would uh, hike after a point of time. So it is better that, you know, uh, so basically the price uh, would get down. It is better that I should buy. So how it actually happens in this, they say Exxon will go for geometric and this refiner will go for arithmetic. Now in put option, in put option, which is the Exxon's call, Exxon would be paying floating, which is geometric mean, because every day the the closing would be different. Of course, that would be floating minus. They will agree to a rate, assuming it could be any rate, which is received fix. If at the end of the expiration, if at the end of the expiration, the things would come in his favor, example, if this floating would turn out to be less than this, then they will go for this. If it is more than this, they would let it worthless for which they are going to pay the premium. Alternatively, refinder would be paying fixed minus they would be receiving floating. Refiner must be must be thinking that the price of the oil, which is the closing price of the oil, should not be like that. That at the time of the expiration, the the, the basically the simple average which I'm taping uh, taking that simple average should be uh, that uh, it should not be less because if it is less, you know, then I have to make it worthless. So they want uh, because the premium is a loss, right? So they want it to be on the higher side of the game so that it's a benefit for them. But there is a third option also which generally books are not declaring. Sometimes you will not find in the media also. You will not find in the internet also, which is Bermudian. Now the problem with these both the options, although they both are good options, the problem with that is the problem with both the option is that you are taking a daily figure. So assuming you have taken out here the exam with the trader or the trader with the refiner they have done for two months. Assuming two months means practically you are working for uh, how many days? Uh, one month have eight working. So you're working for 22 days, right? So 22 into two, which is 44, right? Take it 40 flat. So it's an average of 40. That is a different, the, the, the first one is taking a geometric, the later one is taking an arithmetic. That is a different scene of the life. On the contrary, take it a different way. Take it a different look. They wanted to have a Bermudian. Now remember carefully before explaining Bermudian is that the premium cost of Bermudian would be several times than that of a put. We should not forget a golden rule of a foreign exchange, which is that the premium of a put would always be more than the premium of a call. And one golden golden rule of a foreign exchange, the premium of a Bermudian would be several times than that of a put. And premium of a Bermudian is uh, is dependent upon a client, how he is taking it actually. So what exactly in this it would happen? In this the client would say, let's draw a timeline. This is where I am starting. This is where I am, exp uh, this is where my expiration. So rather than taking this so called 40 days, because I have assumed that the for a month you are working 20 days and just 8 days is the holiday which is Saturday, Sunday and and another two days is some other holidays. They will decide in a they will decide 15 days. Body small. They will decide any 15 days. Now it's up to them. The average would only be of that 15 days. Now that average would be a geometric average or that would be an arithmetic. That is a different thing. 
but the meaning of the Bermudian is rather than taking for complete 40 days you will take it only for 15 days it, it might be 20 also it might be 30 also it might be 6 also the lesser you take the more would be the premium the more you will take might be you will equal to the put premium so it's up to you this is how tapos work from my professional angle tapos are very good the only problem I see in the depots is the, is the outlier part. If anything would have happened, you know that 2008 is a reality, 2012 sovereign crisis is a reality, US uh, economy temporarily shut down is a reality. There are so many realities before us. We cannot ignore that. We cannot just have a blind mind that we can ignore that. So in short, my only suggestion for, uh, uh, for the regulator before having that uh, to, uh, to change in the depots is to reduce the outlier. Of course, I know that once I'm going to have that, there are several people, those who come and say that, how would you price outliers? There are specified methodologies, how you price the outlier. But my professional angle suggests that, my personal opinion suggests that, outlier is the only thing that has to be reduced. Elsewise, this product is a wonderful product as far as the oil is concerned, as far as the metals is concerned, and there are a number of other derivatives is concerned. This is a tried and tested thing which is happening in the foreign exchange and also in the metal derivative. At the end, Tragic Consulting is an energy player. This is not the only video which we are circulating. This is the second video. There are a lot of videos on the cards and I'll assure you that in the next few months of time, you just name it. Jet fuel hedging, air freight hedging, CNG hedging, LNG hedging, aluminium, metal, silver, wheat, soya bean, you just name it. Everything would be on our YouTube channel. If you like this, uh, select our channel. And in case you do have any option, any any clar clarification, our Skype ID is Rahul5327. Email is rahul.magan at the rate consulting dot in. Platform is www.fixedincome.global. It can easily be used via mobile phone. Website is www.treasuryconsulting dot in. Mobile 9899242978. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy your day. Thank you.